Welcome to the Schluter Systems Installation Studio. What we're going to do is put in a Curdy line drain in a wall placement. So we're going to show you a few components we're going to get started with. One is the channel body of the Curdy line drain. You can see that the Curdy's already attached to the flange. Another component we're going to use is the support. It goes on the underside of the channel here and supports the channel along its full length. It also gives us the right height, shims us up off the floor to accommodate the thickness of our shower tray. You can see that the, the taper is in the shower tray here. We've got the curdy on the tray already. And then you notice a little depression down here at the end, which is going to accommodate the thickness of our drain flange. So the way this is going to go together, we're going to put this up against the wall. Then we're going to take our channel support and also place it to the wall. That's going to indicate where we're going to cut the tray for the channel support. Once we cut the tray and put the channel support in there flush, we're ready to put the curdy drain on top, and then we'll be ready to start waterproofing. Place the channel support on the shower tray where it's to be installed and mark along the tray in order to cut. Peel the release paper from the adhesive strip and press the tray together at the fold. Cut the shower tray to size. Apply unmodified thinset mortar to the area where the channel support is to be installed using a quarter by three eighths square or U-notch trowel. Burn the thinset mortar into the substrate with the flat side of the trowel and then comb additional mortar using the notch side. Place the thin side of the channel support against the wall and solidly embed the foam in the thinset mortar. Apply additional thinset mortar to the top of the channel support using the same notch trowel. Cut the curdy collar where the curdy line is to be installed adjacent to the wall. We folded up the curdy collar and used small pieces of tape to hold it in place for a neat installation. Solidly embed the channel body in the thinset mortar and check for level. Apply unmodified thinset mortar to the area where the shower tray is to be installed using a quarter by three eighths square or U-notch trowel. Place the shower tray and firmly embed it into the thinset mortar. We used a piece of cardboard to protect the tray while pressing it into the mortar. Check the underside of the tray to ensure full coverage is achieved. Re-embed the shower tray. We've established a height on our bathroom floor, so we're now flush with the top of our tray. We've also installed DITRA, our uncoupling membrane, and tied the seams together with curdy bands so now we have a waterproof bathroom floor. We need to complete the waterproofing. We have to tie the floor to wall connection all the way around the perimeter of the tray and the drain body to the back wall and to the tray using the curdy that's on the body already. So that's next. Apply unmodified thinset mortar using a quarter by 3 16 V-notch trowel or the Schluter curdy trowel.
solidly embed the curdy into the mortar to ensure proper adhesion and to remove any air pockets. Remove the protective covering from the channel body for the installation of the curdy carrot corner. The bottom of the corner must be trimmed so that it doesn't protrude over the channel and interfere with the grate assembly. Install the corner, making sure to firmly embed it into the thin set mortar. Repeat this process with the Curdy Band waterproofing strips along the shower tray, ensuring that all seams are overlapped by a minimum of two inches. waterproofed the entire system, so now it's time to install the profiles and tile. We install the Schluter Dilex EKE profile at all floor-to-wall and wall-to-wall -wall transitions, while leaving space for the system profiles that will be installed along the shower tray. Spread thin-set mortar and solidly embed the profile. Install the first course of wall tile and floor tile along the edge of the shower tray. Make sure to use an appropriate notch trowel for the size of the tile and back butter the tile as needed to achieve full coverage. We're going to install the grate assembly and the system profiles now. The grate frame fits into the channel body with thinset. You'll find height adjustment spacers that fit underneath the tabs that adjust the height so you can get flush with the tile on the tray. Also, some frame spacers that keep the, the width consistent across the entire length of the frame during the tile setting process. We also have a profile that's going to fit against the back wall. This is brushed stainless steel with a channel so this part slides in and out. We're going to set that at the width we need to fit in underneath our first course of wall tile. Now you can see that there's curdy applied to the back that's going to give us some mechanical fastening when we bond this with thinset. Then on the side, we're going to use this profile. You can see brushed stainless steel, tapered metal profile that fits along the side of the tile and gives us a nice clean finish where the floor tile remains on plane and the tray, of course, is sloping towards the drain. You'll see that this fits in a, in a channel and there's anchoring legs on here to affix it to the floor inside the tray. So that's what we're going to do now. We selected the shower profile R according to the height of the wall area to be covered. Measure for the required length and height. Adjust the profile to achieve the desired height and cut the profile to length. We cut the stainless steel profile using the Schluter ProCut PSM cutting wheel on an angle grinder set to low speed. We selected the shower profile S, tapered profile, according to the thickness of the tile. Measure for the required length and height of the profile. Snip the U-shaped support profile to length and cut the tapered section of the profile. To install the shower profile R, apply a sufficient amount of thinset mortar to the fleece fabric on the back of the profile and set the profile into place. Make sure it is flush with the tiles. Wipe away any excess setting material immediately. Next, we will install the grate frame. 
The grate frame is set in conjunction with the surrounding tiles. Apply unmodified thin set mortar to the back and sides of the underside of the grate frame and place it into the channel body. Insert the height adjustment spacers and adjust to the height of the tile by simply turning the bolts by hand. Insert the foam spacers into the grate frame to reinforce it during the remainder of the installation. Fill the front side of the grate frame with thin set mortar. Full coverage of thin set mortar under the grate frame is essential. Apply thin set mortar to the area where the shower profile S is to be installed. Place the tapered section of the profile into the U-shaped support section and butter the back of the profile with thin set mortar. Install the profile, aligning it flush with the floor tile. Immediately clean any setting material away from the face of the profile. We repeat the process at the wall, this time making sure the profile is flush with the wall tile. Install the tile onto the shower tray. Make sure to use an appropriate notch trowel for the size of the tile and back butter the tile as needed to achieve full coverage. We install the Dialex profile at the transition from the floor to the shower to accommodate any potential movement. There are several drain grate options available. Option A features a closed design of brushed stainless steel. Option B is brushed stainless steel with square perforations. Tile covering support D creates a virtually invisible drainage line. 